My friends, good morning. So today we celebrate in the church the feast of Corpus Christi, which is also known as the feast of the body and blood of Christ. Now, in Poland, where I come from, and in some other countries as well, this feast is a big deal. It's actually a holiday. No school, no work, no stores are open, so you have to buy the food a day before if you want to eat something on that day. There are huge processions throughout cities and villages. And this feast is celebrated on Thursday. Thursday, which is the day of the Last Supper. And that makes perfect sense. Now, there are many and plenty of things that could be said about this feast. One can talk about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, in the bread and the wine. The mystery that is so great that we will probably never be able to fully understand it. So we stand before that mystery of Christ's presence in the Eucharist with humility. We who gather here, we are also called the body of Christ. We are Corpus Christi. And today, little Kingston will be baptized into the body of Christ, will become part of our community when the water is poured on his head. And as such, we are called to bring Christ to others and to see Christ in others, especially the people who are suffering and struggling because Christ is present to them in a unique way. If you remember, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. But today I want to briefly talk about the Eucharist as a gift. Life is all about giving and receiving. Isn't that true? One another. Love as we share love with one another. Simple gifts that we give to one another. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks about giving himself as bread and wine. Mark told us, while they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and they all drank from it. So I would suggest that the, at the heart of the Mass is the act of giving and the act of receiving. This is what Mass is all about. <clears throat> and it reminds us why Sunday after Sunday we gather together at St. Patrick's and people in the churches all over the world. You see, 
God does not call us to church on Sunday because God has a need for us to fall down before him and worship him on Saturday at 4.30 or Sunday at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 5, 5 p.m. At the heart of every Mass is this powerful act of God offering himself to us. That's the point. God giving himself to us. God's desire to be in us and with us and for us. Take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. So this feast is all about God becoming a gift and it is all about us embracing the gift of God in our lives. Sunday after Sunday, with all that has happened to us this past week and with all that will happen to us in the week ahead. We all love gifts, don't we? We buy gifts, we give them to people we love. Kingston probably is going to receive some gifts today, today as well at his baptismal party. We look for special gifts that will make a difference and put a big smile on somebody's face. Every Mass is a mystery, and every Mass is a gift during which the giver and the gift is one and the same person, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what it is all about. Yeah. And when you receive a gift, what do you usually say? Thank you. Yeah, that's right. And maybe the early Christians had that sense of what it was all about when they gathered around the table of the Eucharist because they called that gathering, what? The Eucharist, which is a Greek word for thank you, for giving thanks. You know, at the end of the day, that's all you can say. Just thank you. Some people see God as a burden. Some people see God as a problem they need to solve or a puzzle they need to put together. Some people see God as an idea to think about. I would suggest in conclusion that today's feast and every Mass challenges us to see God as a gift in our lives and to be thankful for that gift. And maybe even more, maybe to actually see everything in our lives as a gift and to live with gratitude. So as you go through this week today, we invite you to ask yourself this simple question. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for me to see God as a gift in my life? And what does it mean to embrace that gift?